Hey everybody, it's Nathan Cool with Swell Watch on SurfingMagazine.com. It's time for another El Nino update. We've only got four months until Thanksgiving, hard to believe. It is almost August. A lot has happened over the last few weeks. You might recall from my last El Nino video that I did back in June, we were heading into a strong El Nino, and if you've been watching the news, <laughs> you know that everybody's jumping on board talking about that. But what does it really mean that this is a different El Nino this year? I wanted to show you exactly what's going on. You might recall if you've read my book, uh, Is It Hot in Here? The Simple Truth About Global Warming. wrote that about 10 years ago. It talks about different things about El Nino when it comes to climate change. Some of that could be happening now. Um, it's still kind of up in the air, but most uh, almost inevitably that it has something to do with it. Also in the book, you might enjoy things, uh, for instance, talking about the PDO. I'm going to cover a little bit of that, what that means for what's going on right now. And are we actually seeing more El frequent El Ninos? But more importantly, for Southern California, and most of California actually, what does this mean for weather? We were in a severe drought. Uh, people are looking forward to big surf, but could it be that the surf is big, but the weather is bad? It's gonna be blown out, it's gonna be hazardous. Is this something to fear? Is it something to enjoy? Is it something to look forward to? Well, I've got all the details of how things look so far, so let's take a closer look. First thing I'd like to do is talk about what El Nino really is. If I, if I just well, I just want to spend a couple of minutes talking about that to be able to show some of the developments and help you maybe understand what's really going on a little bit better. So as shown in this diagram, this is La Nina conditions or what we might consider normal conditions. And what we have are trade winds that blow normally from east to west across the equator. It tends to pool up warm water then when we're talking about off of Indonesia and then it would be a lot cooler than it would, uh, off the coast of Peru, Central America, and whatnot. So that's normally what happens. We're in the opposite of uh, an El Nino called a La Nina. But this is what happens when El Nino happens, and this is what has most of the attention on what's going to happen in the forecast. So just real quickly, El Nino, it means that this condition reverses. So the trade winds tend to either relax or more so we get westerly winds that blow across. What that does, blowing across the equator, it piles up that warm water on the other side. Our weather is influenced heavily between the interaction of land, atmosphere, and ocean. So differences in temperature, the circulation of our planet, we get all kinds of things going on. So you can just see real quick during normal conditions, and this diagram here shows there would be higher convection over here because of lower pressure due to that warm water. Well, when that changes, then we actually have that weather pattern shift. It doesn't just shift in one place across the equator, it shifts across the entire planet. And when that happens, this is what we see. And this is a, uh, a popular uh, image that was released this last week by NOAA. And it shows the difference in water temperatures. This shows the anomalous temperatures. And this is what we try to use to gauge what El Nino is going to do, how strong it could be. So this is a familiar uh, diagram a lot of you have probably seen. This is real satellite data though, nice. Um, we see El Nino in its full strength here, and a lot of red. These are warmer than normal water temperatures off the coast of Peru. But something's a little different here in this diagram, and that's these two centers of very warm water. So here we've got, for some reason, very abnormal, uh, abnormally warm water off of the California coast and extending quite a distance out. We've also got what's known as the blob, and this has meteorologists scratching their head. No one knows exactly if this is affecting weather right now. There's some theories on that. Um, we also don't know exactly what that's going to mean for El Nino. But more importantly, we can see that we have a pile up of warm water going across the equator, and that's because of the relaxation in the winds across the equator, and also we're seeing some anomalies. So this is a diagram showing over a couple different weeks here in July. This was 16 July, this was 21st July, those uh, weeks. And we can see in the red, those are anomalous winds. So this is the equator moving across here. We can see this is Peru, Central America, Indonesia's over here. And so we can see in the red here, we've got highly anomalous winds actually blowing. So it's not just a relaxation in the trade winds. We've had what's known as westerly wind bursts, a lot of westerly winds blowing across uh, the equator. So actually helping to pile up that warm water. And even just recently, in just the last week or so here in July, we've had a lot of that happening. So a lot of uh, wind anomalies that are intensifying the El Nino. So this is what it looks like right now. This is actually a couple days ago. Um, and you can see that here we have, the, once again, similar to the satellite picture uh, that was shown by NOAA. This is a model diagram showing uh, those warm waters and extending quite a ways out. 
We can see kind of that blob taking form here. But there's something different. Let's take a look at 1997. You may recall 1997, 1998, that was the last super powerful El Nino, the one that brought, brought flooding rains, it brought Big Wednesday to Hawaii, followed by Big Friday in California, that was in January 1998, all fueled by this El Nino event. So a couple things though to notice that are different. Notice how this is very solid red. So it really didn't change much. And by the way, this is on today's date, but back in 1997, 729. There's also no real blob up here. There's really not any uh, abnormally warm waters off of California. So those are different than what we're seeing right now. So we do have a different uh, El Nino pattern. Also, look at how spotty this is. And the reason for that is that it looks can be very deceiving. This is just a snapshot of a day of sea surface temperatures, but that doesn't tell the whole story. The reason being, and this is a, a time graph uh, that shows the abnormal water temperatures, and it gives us a better view as to really what's going on and why this is varying and why we really can't use those diagrams as much to try to predict what's going to go on in the future, especially this upcoming winter. If we look over here on the y-axis, this is time as it goes down, that's time moving forward. So down here you can see this is July 2015, way at the top, August 2014. Across the x-axis, these are the degrees of longitude. Um, so when we take a look, this would be 80 west around, uh, you know, getting close to Peru. This is the uh, western Pacific over here at 130 east. We can see that over time, right in this area, when we get into the eastern Pacific, around May 2015, there was extremely warm water temperatures. Then there was a little bit of cooling. Then there was a lot of warm water temperatures followed by that. So things come in waves. This particular one was a diagram associated with what's known as a Kelvin wave. But the thing is, the, there's constant upwelling, constant downwelling. So day-to-day -day variations are very hard to judge what's going to go on with El Nino. Climate is a long-term process. So we can see the same type of thing in just a standard SST anomaly going from 5 north, 5 south. So we cover a few degrees of, uh, of latitude uh, across the equator. And the same thing, you can see that at no time are things ever consistent. So things will vary day to day, week to week, month to month. So what NOAA does, when they come out with their El Nino predictions, they use something very unique. And they use what's known as a three month mean. So taking all the temperatures and putting them into the mean temperature for a three month period. Let's take a look down here on the X axis and then I'll describe this chart a little bit more in detail and what this means for the upcoming year. December, January, February, January, February, March, February, March, April, March, April, May, April, May, June. These are overlapping three month means. By taking that measurement and taking a three month mean, then you'd get all the day to day noise, the week to week noise, and you can actually see a real trend start to appear. What I've done here is this is a graph that I just threw together of where we are so far this year and only for the El Nino years that we've seen in recent times. So up here at the top, this is uh, in purple here, this is right now, this is 2015, this is the latest reading. You can see the 1997 El Nino is down here in blue and other El Nino years. Couple things interesting with this. 2015 started out warmer as an El Nino year than any of the previous El Nino years. We can see that it's also warmer than where it was in 1997 at this time, but not as at the same rate of escalation of warmth. So you can see that there was a heavy slope, a very steep slope in 1997 leading up to this time of year. So we are though seeing a very strong El Nino. And if you were to just go by this and just take this data and you tried to plot that out, it would look horrendous. So let's take a look at some of that. So this is a, a forecast that's actually issued about weekly, run through some models, and these are possibilities, not probabilities, I'll get to that in a second. But this is measured across a portion of the equator known as Nino 3.4. It's a little section across the equator that kind of overlaps how far the El Nino tail tends to go. Anyways, uh, this shows the month by month. Once again, some of that noise is in there because it's not using a three month mean. We can see those some amazing temperatures of what, uh, what we could expect, uh, bearing in mind that 1997 had a three month mean of about two and a half degrees. Look at this. Some of these are showing it off the charts over at four degrees. Some models are predicting it's going to be no, no less than 2.5. Um, you can see this is where we are right now in that same type of escalation that I was showing before. But these are possibilities, not necessarily probable. So what 
uh, NOAA likes to do is to show this chart. This is with, with what's known as a PDF correction. Um, it takes model bias um, out of the probability uh, forecast. So if uh, you've ever studied statistics, you know a little bit about calculus, it's a matter of taking the density of the probabilities in a distribution. So if I were to take all the possibilities, and if I were to put these possibilities that we have here from uh, various years and put that into some type of distribution and then I calculated the density underneath of it, I could use that to then put a correction. In other words, this is your more likely, this is your highly probable uh, scenario compared to where this is possible. And if you follow me on Facebook, you might recall last week I posted this and said, here's some El Nino porn. Um, it's, it's possible. Uh, this is actually more probable. Not to say that this couldn't happen, but this is the probability. Anyways, let's take a look at the probability and here we can see that on average our probability is into about the strength of the 1997-1998 uh, El Nino. So that is the highly probable uh, forecast at this point. So taking a look at various other models and what they think. Um, there's a whole lot of models. This has actually been uh, upgraded uh, since my report uh, last month. And you can see this is where we are now. So we were on that warming trend of uh, sea surface temperature anomalies increasing. And then when we go into the future, the models, they vary widely. But there is a clustering, there is a trend that's going on that we would be at least about 1.5 to about 2 degrees above normal for the, uh, this winter for the El Nino. This is a three-month mean, and if we look where that cluster is, it's November, December, January. So we're in that three month mean where we would normally get a lot of the rains in, uh, in Southern California. And of course the, the bigger surf coming in during that time as well. But no El Nino is exactly like another El Nino. And that's what this chart shows here. So this is historical sea surface temperature anomalies. The ones on the top in red, those are El Ninos. The ones on the bottom in blue, those are La Ninas. And anything in between would be neutral, but as you can see, there really is hardly any such thing <laughs> um, in, in, when it comes to uh, the ENSO cycle or El Nino-La Nina cycle. But something that's interesting, look at our El Nino right now. This is over here, this is 2014, kind of a bit of a sawtooth, and all of a sudden recently it escalated high, and it still has a ways to go. 1997-98 wasn't a very long-lasting El Nino event. In fact, it was uh, preceded and then followed by a very uh, sharp La Nina. But it did escalate very quickly. Um, one of the things that could happen this year is it could escalate very quickly and last even longer. But that's hard to tell. Uh, when we had strong El Ninos, I can see the one in 82 to 83, that was also very high. And of course, just like the 97-98 El Nino. So what's that going to actually turn out to be like? We don't know. One of the things though that was in the favor of the 1997-98 El Nino was something known as the PDO, uh, the Pacific Decadal Oscillation. And I talked about this more in Is It Hot in Here um, in more detail. It's kind of like El Nino's big brother in a way. Um, and this charts it. Uh, this actually goes on decades long scales compared to um, uh, El Nino, which is it could just be months to uh, 18 months or so. Uh, but you can see 1997 had a very strong PDO signal. That's the blue up here. So when it came into about the summertime, there's a very strong PDO signal, which quickly weakened out. Other El Ninos kind of just meandered about and were very, pretty much unimpressive. If we take a look at this year, and that's this purple line that still has time to go because only have readings that go back into June. We are on an escalating PDO cycle right now. The PDO also started out very warm. Um, but this is different. Once again, this isn't exactly like what's been, you know, we can forecast. It's not exactly like 1997. It's not exactly like any other recent El Nino that we've had that we can actually judge it by. So this also brings a big question mark into the forecast. Lastly, I wanted to show what may be going on in the tropics. More confusion on the models once again. Uh, if you've been following me on Facebook and, and on uh, Swellwatch at surfingmagazine.com, you know, I've been talking about the MJO, and uh, it's, a, it's a cycle 
that uh, helps to predict what we can expect out of hurricane formation. People are wondering right now, it's like, hey, we've got extremely warm waters. Where are the hurricanes? Uh, well, the red here shows what we could expect as far as more convection or what could cause hurricanes. And the same down here when we get more into August. And this would be typical. But there's nothing extremely out of the ordinary here. In fact, these models, instead of being updated every week, their forecasts have been changing almost every couple days because a lot of changes keep happening, a lot of unknowns. Uh, basically, we're in a, a, an area, an uncharted territory of what's going on. Uh, a lot of things have been changing, a lot of things happening, and just like we take a look back at other past El Nino events, no two are exactly alike. A lot of different things vary, and that's why the models are kind of all over the place. They can't even decide exactly what's going to happen. There is a possibility that we could see extremely warm waters, and there's a probability, definitely, that they will be warm, but maybe just about as strong or near as strong as what we saw in 1997. But what does that really mean for us as far as surf, weather, and, and uh, everything else that goes along with it? Well, we don't know. 1997 was one way, and of course, we're in something different. We're up against a warming world. We're up against the blob out here. Uh, the scientists actually call it the blob. And we are uh, up against warmer waters off of California. So at this point, there's a lot of unknowns, but there are some things that we can forecast. So some of the things that we do know. Uh, we know we're definitely in an El Nino. Uh, El Nino is definitely going to be strong. Uh, Noah's calling for, once again, a 90% chance that this will continue uh, throughout the winter, uh, over an 80% chance that it'll even last uh, well into the spring. So it's possible that we could even see El Nino even next year, possibly a bit weaker. As far as this winter goes, it's a good bet to, to count on more rain for California. It could be too much rain. We really don't know yet. We're going to know more in the coming months. Once again, it's climate. We need a three-month mean. We need to be able to see stuff not week to week. We need to see how stuff actually does behave over a trend and see if we can make then correlations to that trend. There are things, though, that are happening. We see drought in various places of the world, not just in California, but Australia is dealing with a very severe drought, but we're seeing it also in South America and, and other places as well. Uh, we have seen a lot of die-offs, you might recall from my last El Nino video, and that's very typical to happen, too, during a very strong El Nino event. But no one knows exactly what the weather or surf will be. We can't even predict weather seven days out, let alone uh, five, six months away. But there is, once again, the probability and a high probability that we are going to have a very strong El Nino this winter. That's all that I've got for right now. You can, though, if you want to keep up to date on this type of stuff, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. And as soon as posts like this are, are available, these videos, you'll be notified. I'll be following El Nino throughout the year, as well as other major events that happen as far as weather and surf, especially for the California coast. You can also follow me on my forecasts over on Swell Watch on surfingmagazine.com. Just go to forecasts.surfingmagazine.com, and I do the report for California, Southern California in particular. Also, you can follow me on Facebook if you like, facebook.com slash Nathan Todd Cool. Well, that's all for now, so until next time, take care, be safe, and smile in the lineup.